one year ago on Saturday, March 17, 2012, our patrol units responded to reports of an altercation inside the Sunset and Vine Pub in Northeast Calgary. Upon arrival, a man was found in medical distress, suffering from apparent stab wounds. The man, who was later identified as Mario Alberto Gomez, 23 years of age, died at the scene. Witness accounts indicate that the victim was standing inside the bar when he became involved in an altercation with another man. Gomez was stabbed and the offender quickly left the bar along with a group of friends. Approximately 25 witnesses were transported to police headquarters for questioning that evening, the evening and all cooperated with the investigation. The suspect is described as a Caucasian male, uh, six feet tall uh, with short sandy brown hair. It is believed he is approximately between 20 and 25 years of age. In July of 2012, we released photographs and videos from the scene in an effort to identify several people who may have information about the homicide. The public has come forward with information and investigators have been able to identify some of those individuals. However, we are still hoping to identify two men in attendance at the pub that night and have released their photos uh, to the media today. Anyone with information is asked to call our homicide tip line at 403-428-8877. I'll take your questions. Why do you believe this was not a random attack? Uh, that just what, what, what made you rule that out, that this was a random attack? Uh, in the course of our investigation, again, we've spoken to dozens of people, and the information is very consistent that this was not uh, uh, an incident of, of inside the bar that was of random nature. Uh, the victim uh, was targeted in the attack, and that's very obvious through our investigation. Everyone we've spoken to this the, and the other information that we have. Do you have any reason to believe that this could be drug related and related to the attack? At this point, until we know exactly who the offender is, the motive as to why this happened, I think, is still one of the goals of the investigation to help us determine what happened because we're not clear right at this moment why this did happen. The, uh, the, the suspect and his friends, were they in the had been in the bar for some time, or was it a situation where they walked in, stabbed, and then left? In uh, Inside the crowded bar, it, it's very difficult to determine exactly what role everyone played. We have spoken to dozens of people that were there that night. Um, we are now we're to the point where we're looking for these last two people to help us better determine exactly the, the role and the actions of the offender leading up to that incident. And these two individuals, friends of the, um, the, that guy? I think right now it's hard to determine exactly what role they played, and that's why we're, we're very anxious to speak to these two men. What about uh, Mr. Gomez's background? Is there anything in there to lead you to believe that you know, that's why he was targeted, maybe he was involved in some kind of a, a legal activity? So the, the background of our victim in this situation isn't relevant to the incident. And because of that, I think we're hesitant to speak too much about his background and, and what he may or may not have been involved in leading up to that night. Uh, it's, pretty, it's, it's obvious to us that there, there, was not, there was no action taken by our victim that night to cause uh, this incident. Was the victim known to the police? And again, we're not going to, um, I guess, get into what the victim is or is not known for because it's not relevant to this incident during this time. Can you tell us are there any gang uh, affiliations? Any, either way? Um, at, again, at this point, while we're still trying to identify everyone that was involved, including the offender, uh, it's too early to make that determination. Did these two men that you, you're trying to identify leave with? Is he one of the friends? Are they, I mean, I think you sort of asked that, but. And I think we're. we're at this point, we're not sure, and that's why we'd like to speak to these two men to, to determine exactly what role they played and who they were there with and what they saw uh, that night. What about the other friends that are mentioned? Uh, have you spoken with any of them that you've identified? Yes, we have. Uh, during the first round of photos and video that we put out, we were able to identify several people uh, that we had not identified initially at the scene. Uh, we've spoken to uh, a great number of people, and now we're, and, and that so now the, that has taken us to the point where we need to identify who these two men are. Was the victim uh, by himself when he was there? Did he go over the I believe he was there with a group of friends as well. I'm getting back to the reason to, Sorry, you've got good reason to believe that the, the people that you're seeking are still in the Calgary area? Uh, we're not sure. We're not sure who they are, and that's why 
uh, we're asking for the public's assistance today. The public was a great help with the first round of photos and video that we put out. And we think that based on that, someone is going to know who these people are and will help us out with that. And I just want to come back to your question. Well, um, I'm just wondering if you've spoken to any individuals that you've identified as friends of the person you're looking for, are they not cooperating to, to give you the identity? or? I think in investigations like this, when there are several people involved and several people speaking to the police, uh, quite often you need everyone's information to help put the whole thing in perspective. And it's it's not uncommon for people not to be truthful with us in situations like this when we look to speak to them. And sometimes it takes us, uh, we need to speak to everyone involved before we can determine uh, exactly who's being truthful with us and who's not. How difficult is it to jog people's memories a year after the fact? I mean, you know, there's 25 people in that bar that you interviewed, and now you're reissuing some photographs of individuals you'd like to speak to. Just, you know, how, how difficult is it to sort of you know, get people to revisit that time? I think in an incident like this where someone has died, uh, I don't think it's difficult to jog people's memory to that night because I don't think too many of us are involved in incidents in a night or, or at a location where someone actually died. So I think the people that were there that night, uh, whether they've been spoken to or not, are fully aware that someone died that night. And it's probably etched in their mind fairly well. And so that's why we're confident again that by coming today, um, which is the anniversary weekend, the one year anniversary of his death, that we are confident that people are going to remember. And as always, people sometimes don't contact the police or come forward because they think what they know or saw isn't relevant or is too small. And again, this is another opportunity to say that that's just not true. And let us be the determination, make that determination. Come forward with the information you have on the people you know that were there that night and let us uh, determine how relevant that information is. Did you have any help, assistance with the security cameras or anything in the establishment? And these photos are from the surveillance equipment at that location. So uh, it is. Uh, it is a, an assistance in the investigation, absolutely. Have you spoken with the family and how they're doing one year later? Uh, they're devastated. Uh, their loved one was murdered. And they're looking for answers. And uh, we are hoping to help them through that process and help provide uh, some of that information. This, it strikes me as, as an odd case where you have a crowded bar, 25 witnesses, um, surveillance video, and some 16 cameras. I think I saw in one report. Uh, You've, you've solved uh, other crimes with a lot less evidence and a lot sooner, so is it frustrating now? It, um, every, every investigation that we enter into is different and unique all to itself. And the, the circumstances that you speak of are absolutely true. And here we are still a year later and we're not in a position uh, where we know for sure who the offender is and are, and are in a position to lay a charge. And you're right, we've spoken to dozens of people, probably more than 25, much more than 25. And we have surveillance equipment, and that just speaks to our video and photos of people that were there that night. That just speaks to the complexity of these investigations, to the standard of which we have to reach before we can actually lay the charge in an incident like this. And if it's not random, and they knew each other, uh, I presume, um, you know, that even narrows down the, the, the possibilities right there, right? Until we know exactly who the offender is, it's, it's hard to speculate if they knew each other 